There's been a lot of um, believing the Lord for great provision on all levels. So um, hang in there with us, keep believing. It's just step by step, right? Carpet soon, you know, bathrooms in the same building soon. That would be fantastic. Um, just, it's just a process. Yeah. So thank you guys who've been, been working so hard. I'm sure I'll let people out, but I'm so very thankful. Um, we need to continue to pray for Mary, um, recovering from surgery. I believe she sees her doctor on Thursday, I believe, the 4th. And uh, let's just be believing for good report. And then Alan is recovering from his surgery. He's doing well, but still in recovery. Um, and then let's pray for Damon and Christy Schreiner. Christy's dad was diagnosed with cancer um, several months back. And in this last week, he had three strokes. Um, the last one on Thursday, Friday morning, I believe, left him blind in a, a mass on his brain that cannot be removed. And so she and the girls left Friday for Charleston to, to be with, with the family. And um, so we just been praying for grace and mercy. And it was really wonderful. Damon got a, a truck load, drives truck, and he got a load that was going to let him drive and meet them there. So, you know, God is just, sometimes we just forget the beautifulness of God in some of the hardest moments of life. And so there's just beautiful things happening. Let's just pray for just a beautiful time for her family in these moments. Um, as, as Bill Johnson said, there's just no understanding and, and experiencing the presence of God that comes in the valley of the shadow of death. There's just a different level of the presence of God that comes. So I'm just believing her whole family is going to experience that level of the presence of God that is so beautiful in this moment. Amen? Can we do that and believe that for her? And this isn't something we normally do, and I didn't even ask Andy, is this running? Okay, never mind. Um, I'll, say it. I'll say it after service when we turn it off, okay? All right. Um, what else is okay? Oh, greater things is this week. Yay! So we will be leaving Wednesday. That's Wednesday night, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, the services on in the evening are free if you have a plan to be going. But if you want to go up for the evening services, those are free, and you don't have to be registered to attend. I know that Randy Clark is ministering Wednesday night. Sean Smith is Thursday night. Joe Moody Friday night. So if you want to come to one of those, feel free. Let us know. We'll try to find you. It'll be a big crowd, but it'll be great fun. It's just really fun to, to worship with people from really all over the nation and all over the world. It's, it's very funny. He's like, I just can't wait to see all my friends. <laughs> we just developed such wonderful relationships with One Global Awakening. So it'll be a fun time. I know several of us are going, but if you want to show up for one of those night services, do that. It, it's great. So we can get you information if you need it. Amen. Now, as we do prepare to take an offering, uh, one thing that I will remind everybody that Dr. Mike Hutchings, uh, because he'll be in Oklahoma this week for Greater Things, he'll be our guest speaker next Sunday morning. And Mike is a friend. Mike is amazing. He's the director of Global School of Supernatural Ministry. Um, God's using him a lot in bringing healing to people with PTSD and lots of deliverance, and uh, it'll just be a powerful time. I already have reports of several people from out of state who are actually going to be here. Some who are coming to Greater Things and then coming to be a part of our Sunday morning service. So I really encourage you guys to all be present and invite somebody. We have such amazing guests that come into Global Harvest. It's, it's remarkable what God's allowed us to do. And, Mike is the only one on our guest speaker schedule at this point until we get some renovations finished. So uh, be a part. And we always invest a lot in these things. So I would really encourage you to be present. Amen. So this time we're going to take an offering. So thank you for your continued faithfulness. Um, the appraisal for this build, this property, will happen this week. So let's believe for a good appraisal. Amen. It's finally happening. And... Um, We've held up, we've just continued to move forward without um, any loans for what we're doing, but for some of the really big things, uh, we need some financing to happen. So your giving has enabled us to continue 
doing what we need to do and will enable us to continue to pay that $3,000 electric bill that's coming due. So if you think your bill was high, um, just praise God. <laughs> praise God. God is faithful and he's meeting all of our needs. So we're, we're thankful that we've had money put back for such a time as this. Praise the Lord. And uh, let's just expect God to just continue to be. Amen. So Father, we just want to thank you for your provision in every area for Global Harvest. Father, thank you for what you're doing in this place. Thank you that uh, for what you're doing in all the ministries of Global Harvest. And Father, we just obey your word. And uh, Father, we live to see the building of your kingdom. We put you first in all things. And we seek you and your kingdom first in all things. So Father, thank you that uh, what a privilege to give of not only our own lives, but Father, to give our finances with an expectation that you're meeting our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. But Father, that comes because we're seeking your kingdom first. And so, Father, today we give, we, we, we give what you've given. It all belongs to you. And so, Father, we just give and we just sow in faith today. Thank you for your faithfulness, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So just come and give and uh, we don't pass a plate we'll just give into the chest and you can give online as well and I know many many people do that so uh, praise God so we just bless the Lord thankful for him and his goodness thankful for his vision and his call and we just want to pursue that amen praise God All right, this time we're going to dismiss kids, children, babies, all of those, that group, to go and be a part of nursery and children's church, and we're thankful for what the Lord is doing in our kids. God's raising up a generation, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, last week was an interesting service, amen, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of questions. And our harvest groups were really good this week. If you're not part of harvest groups, I encourage you to jump into those. But this morning, I want to preach on uh, on, and I'm I'm gonna I do this occasionally, and I uh, I, I call this a core message, right? And what I, by what I mean of a core message, it's a message that um, identifies who we are as a church. Amen. It's something that identifies one of the things that we really emphasize as a ministry and that, that marks us. And so uh, this morning I want to share, and there'll be times that I occasionally share one of these and I'll just call it a core message. But... Um, I, I've titled this message today, You, in capital letters, I owe you capital, you are a minister. Amen. And we do have that understanding that it's not just, thank God that God's restoring kind of an understanding to the church, that it's not just one man, one woman, one couple that ministers only in the midst of his people. Amen. That's not how the early church functioned. Amen. We are all called, anointed, and equipped to do the work of ministry. Amen. So I want to jump in this morning, and uh, one, of, one of really our goals, and the goals, I believe, of the New Testament church is to activate the saints to exponential life. Amen. So who's a saint this morning? Right? We're all saints, right? Paul would write letters to churches and he'd say to the saints at this particular church and you may not feel like a saint this morning right you may have fought with your spouse and your kids on the way to church no one smiles sheepishly uh, you may have had a crazy week but the Lord says that if you're a believer you're a saint amen and so God wants to activate the saints into full life amen now, one of the things that Jesus said, and I, I love this scripture in John 4, 34, and it was Jesus' mandate. He said, my food 
is to do of the will, to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Amen. You know what Jesus desired? His food, the thing that fueled him, the thing that motivated him was to do the will of the Father who sent him. Right? And, you know, there's this reality that being activated into our call will give us a quality of life that can't be attained any other way. What's your food this morning? Is it to have the best career? Is it to have the best relationship? Is it to have an abundance of social media followers? That's some people's food right now. Right? Is it to, to, you know, have the greatest social life? Is it to have a lot of money? Now, there is an element of fulfillment that comes with some of those things. But the only thing that will, that will fulfill us at a level that will give us abundant life is to do the will of him who sent us. Amen. That's what activates us. That what's, that's what brings us into the quality of life that many of us are looking for in Camp Honey. Because sometimes people have really great jobs and yet they still have this thing in them that's like, I'm unfulfilled. Sometimes people have really great marriages and praise God for great marriages and good relationships and good families. But there's something in them that's still unfulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And even, even sometimes in our success in life, we're like, where, where is the abundant life? Well, it's doing the will of him who sent us. The, it's to our food is pursuing and living in his will and his call, and it's fulfilling his work. Right? We've got a lot of churches in America that, praise God, may be full. They may not be full after COVID and all those things. And, you know, but there's this reality that um, there's a call and a fulfillment that God wants us to step in. That many, I believe, much of the church in America is like, where, where is this abundant life? Yeah. Right? Where's, where's, Where's that thing that, that fills us and fuels us? Well, I'm going to talk about some of that this morning. And I think it is really interesting. And I want to look. I, I quoted Mark, uh, John 4, 34 a while ago, but let's just turn there. Let's turn to John 4, 34. And it's interesting that in light of this, when Jesus said that my food is to do the will of him who sent me, he said that in connection to the harvest. So let's turn to John 4.34. It is Jamie's job to just minister to us. And it is our job, right? You know, they're to make, they're to meet all our prayer needs, they're to take care of everything, they're to do this, they're to do that, and we're just to sit here and be ministered to. I mean, that's kind of the understanding of the American church, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? But that's really not what Scripture says. My job is to equip you to do the work of ministry, right? Now, sometimes we define ministry in a strange way, but we'll get to there and what that actually means in just a moment. But our, our job is to equip. Now, most people, you know, think of on a Sunday morning, man, Pastor, whew, he preached a good message. She preached a good message. I hope y'all think that some days, right? Ooh, that was a real touchdown today. Right? Or somebody got healed. Ooh, praise God. No, that, but you know what? My job is to be the coach that equips you to do the touchdown. Amen. Right? That's my job. My job is like, man, I'm equipping them and uh, I'm pouring into them. And when I'm praying, or even Sunday night, you know, people are getting healed, people are getting saved, people are getting delivered because every saint is a minister, right? That's our job. You're supposed to make the touchdown, not me. Right? That's the function of the church. Well, you know, 
that pastor were more with it, that church would be doing good. I'm not saying that because I know no one here critical is critical. That's another church, right? But really, the, my whole goal, my end result is when I'm done, that I've raised up a generation and a group of people that have gone further than I ever went. That are better ministers than me. Right? That's a coach's job. And then some of you go, no, yeah, you're called to be the star one, right? And that's that's one of the things that this apostolic model is, is that apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, we are pouring into the church to raise up an army. Right. Amen. To raise up the body of Christ, to raise up the temple of God that's filled with the glory of God, releasing the glory of God to a community. Yes. Amen. We talked about this in teachers meeting. I don't think I, I mentioned this last Sunday about when uh, Dr. Sam Matthews and Kathy Matthews' wife were, did I say this last Sunday? I don't think I did. What I feel. That's awesome, isn't it? She said, I love what I feel here. And as we were coming back from looking at the property and we were in the breezeway and Sam goes, well, I, I want to tell you what I'm seeing. He said, and when we were in the other building, he saw us years ago, he said, I see this column of light coming out of that building into the heavenly realm. He said, what I'm seeing is he said, I'm seeing beams of light. And they're shooting out from this property in every direction going all over the community. And he said, even as you continue to move forward in what God's called you to do, and as you continue to take dominion, he's filling you and me with his glory to fill the community with the glory of God. Right? We're all called to do that. What did you fill the community with this week? Right? I don't mean that as condemnation, but as a way to shift our understanding of what, what did you release in the community this week? Right. That's good. What did you release in your family this week? Right. What did you give to your spouse this week? Okay. What was released on the job this week? Did we release the glory of God? What did you release through your social media this week? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Help us, Jesus, but Alan <laughs> or Dwayne or Will, because it's like I can't put that on social media, right? And it's all clean. I'm just saying, yeah. okay. It's just sometimes it may be political, right? So praise the Lord. <laughs> but we're we're called to release the glory of God wherever we go whatever we do. Now, I want to look at um, what God did in the book of Acts. Amen. And uh, I love the book of Acts. I preached out of the book of Acts a lot. But I want us to turn to Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 41. And let's just read verses 41 through 43. These are very familiar passages of Scripture. So, Peter preaches, Holy Spirit's poured out. The church is birthed. 3,000 people get saved. It's a good day in the kingdom. Right? It's crazy and what God does. And it says, Then those who grease out a thousand souls, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done. Through the apostles. Amen. So powerful. So 3,000 people get saved and they immediately go into a good discipleship program. Right? Sometimes we have crusades in America and people, thousands might get saved, but you may never see them again. Right? And these guys went immediately to this being devoted to what was being taught, uh, being devoted to prayer, to being devoted to fellowship. And so, and you know, sometimes we read scripture and we think that the goodness of, of what God was doing in the New Testament church, but then persecution came. Hallelujah. 
right? Now, if this had been an American church, man, they'd been like, this is a successful church. They have over 3,000 members, right? They have got a good discipleship program. Those, that pastor, and actually it wasn't just a pastor, it was 12 apostles pouring into this multitude of people. And, and uh, you know, they were just pouring in. But then the real test came when persecution broke out against the church. Now, what would happen to most healthy churches if persecution came? In a, a church of over 3,000. What happens to healthy churches that lose leadership, gets removed, something like that? It's a struggle to keep the church going forward. Amen. But this is really different from what happened. And um, it says this persecution came. Now, everybody left except the apostles, which is interesting. The apostles actually stayed in Jerusalem. And part of it was probably because maybe some of the persecution may have been coming against people that weren't from a Jewish background. I don't know. Probably not at this point when I think about it. But um, these 3,000 people got scattered and they relocated to other cities and regions. And here's what happened. Let's look at Acts chapter 8 when everybody got scattered. Let's read verse and they scattered all over the country. They preached the word. Right? As they went to Marietta, they preached the word. As they went to Fox, they preached the word. Right? As they went to Southern Hills, they preached the word. As they went to Medill and Lake Texoma, they preached the word as they were scattered. As they went to Springer, they preached the word. As they went to Wilson, Hilton, and Ringland, even there they preached the word. Right? Even in those places, they were scattered. Right? They preached the word in Sulphur and Davis. Maybe even up as far as Oklahoma City. Right? <laughs> Wherever they went, they preached the word. Why? But here, man, we're all called. Right? You're all called as a minister. Now, you may not be an apostle. You may not be a prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher. But you're a saint, and God has given you the ministry of the kingdom. And it's in the place of the going that you find the most communion. It's in the place of the harvest that you find the most communion with the Lord. And where you find the abundant life... When you find the fulfillment, I found the will of God. This is my food that I'm partaking of here in the harvest. It's not necessarily in comfort. It's not necessarily in success or achievement. But it's in the going, this is my food. Strengthens me. This is what gives me the abundant life in the context of fellowship in the moving and the harvest. So they went about preaching the word. Now your harvest, that doesn't mean that you're going to go to Africa as a missionary. Some people are like, Lord, I can't surrender my life to the Lord because he may send me to Africa. Right? He might not send you to Africa, but he may send you to Springer. Right? He, he may not send you to Saudi Arabia, but he may send you to your company. Right? As you go, preach the word. Right? Now that may not mean that you're going to stand up in the plumbing truck where you work and look at your co-workers and say, the Lord says in the teacher's lounge, you may not stand up and say, you brood of vipers. I would. <laughs> Maybe you need to. I don't know. <laughs> What's that? Senior degree. Jamie might be like, you. y'all need to repent. You wicked generation. She has wanted to say that in the school some days. Right? <laughs> but it's being that light. Right? It's, it's suddenly somebody saying, you know, you're different. Right? Or when you walk in a room and suddenly when people cuss, they apologize. 
Or maybe they don't, because you might outcast them. <laughs> you might consider your ways. <laughs> this is real, y'all. <laughs> I'm not saying that Christian. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should repent. <laughs> right? So, um, yeah. I love Jesus, but I cuss a little. Um, I need to move along from this point. So, it, it goes with them. They're preaching. And then look what else it says. It says in verse 7, let's just go ahead and read verse 5 and 6 as well. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. Now, these are, these are just average believers. These aren't even the apostles. This is the guy that they had waiting on tables and feeding widows, right? It says, for unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many workplace. Maybe it's not the time to say, you know, there's this guy, Dwayne. Maybe it's like, come out, devil. Right? Now, you might be careful how you handle that. You can use their name. Right, if it's the CEO of the company, right? I've worked for a company that I wanted to do that a few times. Right, as I walked past the massive Buddha in the executive area. Um, so, but the, the saints are doing the work of ministry. They're casting out demons and of the kingdom with us. Right? Lord, we're waiting for revival. We're praying for revival. No, wherever we go, we are taking the gospel of the kingdom with us. Lord, someday I know that you're going to break out in signs and wonders and miracles. No, it's in the context of going into the harvest that the Lord meets us the most. Yeah. And he's already given you what you need to release the kingdom. Right? I think it's Bill Johnson that talks about we can either wait for the outpouring or we can start the wave. Right? God's waiting on some of us. Woo! Right? God's waiting for some of us to start the wave where we are. Right? And to cause the kingdom to break out. 200 times. Unless you don't believe in that. Hmm. And then don't tell them. Right? But there's something God's just waiting sometimes for some of us just to release what he's already given us. Right? And to see the kingdom break out where we are. To see the release of his glory and his goodness. And man, I, I do think we need to pray for revival and we need to pray for all those things. And we need to pray for a revival that shifts the culture. But sometimes God's just looking for Philip to go into a community and start releasing the kingdom of God. Amen? Now, what was the result of all this? You, you look forward a little bit, and I love Acts chapter 8, chapter 9. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit that multiplied. Right. So rather than being like, oh my gosh, persecution, we're dwindling. No, people were like, no, we've been thrust out into the harvest field. And the church in the known world at that time grew at an incredible rate because they began to understand we're all ministers. We all have the ministry of the saints. Amen. I love some of the teaching of people like um, Dr. Like uh, Bishop Bill Hammond. And yes, how was it? Was it Friday? It was Bishop Hammond's 88th birthday. Wow. Many consider him the, the father of the modern prophetic movement, but he talks about how God has been restoring through the years fivefold ministry. Now, I think it's always been present. There was this you know, move where God was restoring evangelists, right? In the 1970s, you had stuff like the restoration of the teaching gift. 
and that understanding. In the 1980s, it was prophets. 1990s, it was the apostles and Bishop Hammond. Is what comes after all of that? The day of the saints, yeah. right? Where it's not just about the Billy Grahams, and the Benny Hens, and the Catherine Kuhlmans, and the Heidi Bakers, and the Randy Clarks, but it's about the Josh Knoxes, and the Marcia Rudds, and the Emily Rudds, right? And the Diana Huxes, where God's like, I'm raising up a generation of saints that are all walking in the power and the glory of who they are, and they're taking the kingdom wherever they go. And what would happen if the body of Christ got a hold of that? We would see revival. We would see transformation in society when we understood that we're all called. Where we're all called to take the kingdom wherever we go. Amen? We are all ministers. Right? Now, Ministry is doing the works of God. Ministry is basically finding people who in some area of their life are in bondage to darkness and taking them out into the kingdom. Maybe they're not saved yet. Okay? And it's like, man, I want to take you out of the kingdom of darkness and take you into the kingdom of light, into the family of God. Have you heard the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, I don't go to church. That's not what I'm talking about, right? Maybe if it's people that are bound by sickness, that are bound by demons, because of the occult, or because of drugs, and saying, you know what? I'm taking you through the power of God. I'm ministering to you. Let's take you, let's bring you out of darkness in this area of your life into the kingdom. Yeah. Right? I know you're eating at the Lord's table, but this is a conversation Will and I had yesterday, not that we were saying this to each other. But uh, but you can't eat at the table of demons either. Right. Because you know we do that sometimes. Well, I'm gonna take this dish off the Lord's table, but I'm gonna take this dish off the table of the demonic, it's all going to be good. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Does that mean you're walking in abundance? It wants us to minister. And we're so afraid of that term sometimes because it means we have to stand behind the pulpit. No, it means we're ministering the kingdom and you're bringing people out of areas of darkness and bondage and you're bringing them to the kingdom of God. Right? We're all called to do that. Amen. It's bringing salvation, healing, deliverance, and encouragement to the people around us, wherever we go. Amen. Now, I want to read a few scriptures. I want to go through these pretty quickly. And thank God that most of us have this understanding. This is, this is who we are. But sometimes you have to put a core message out there again. Amen. And so, I just read Acts 8, 4. They all went on and preached. Right? What about uh, 16, verses 17 and 18? And these signs will accompany those who believe. Now notice it didn't say these signs will accompany the apostles. Or these signs will accompany the early church until scripture is written. Now, what's the qualification for the, the signs accompanying us? One word. Those who what? Believe. If you don't believe in these things, will they accompany you? Probably not. But for those who believe, amen. And uh, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison. And I think in modern context, that might be like praying. It will not hurt them. They will lay hands on their sick and they will recover. That wasn't for a special class of people. That was for those who believe. I mean, are you a believer this morning? Yes. Then we're believers this morning. Amen. That means we believe the things that God has said. Yes. Amen. John 4, 12. That may be 1412. 
But uh, Jesus said, those who believe in me will do the works that I did, and they will do what? Greater works, right? That's not just for the apostles, not just for the prophets, not just for the evangelists, but those who believe in him, those who pursue him, will do the greater things, amen? That's all of us, amen? Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, let's turn there. 1 Corinthians 14, I'm going to read verse 1 to prophetic ministry using this. Pursue love and earnestly desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Who's called to prophesy in this room? Earnestly desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Paul would have written that to the church in Corinth if he didn't like you all can prophesy. Here's another verse that I love. Uh, I think it's in verse 31. For you can all prophesy one by one so that you can all learn and all may be encouraged. Now today we can say, now if you're called, if you have a prophetic gift, stand up and we'll make you prophesy. But you know what that verse is? You can all prophesy one by one. I could line everybody up here today and say, we'll go down the line and you're going to all prophesy. Some of you might hit the back door. But scripture says that you can all do that and you can prophesy all by one, one by one, so that everyone could learn and everyone could be encouraged. You ever hear somebody say, well, you can't activate people in the prophetic. That's not the word. Well, you all prophesy one by one so that everybody can learn and be encouraged. Right? You know, in the Old Testament, there were schools of the prophets. Right? It's still happening today, even more because we've all been baptized into the New Testament spirit. Right? You don't have to be a prophet. You can all prophesy. Amen? Now, as in anything, we have to grow in that gift. Amen? Now, here's a really fun one, too. Hebrews chapter 5. Are you seeing a consistency here? All. All of us can do these things. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. About this we have much to say, and it is hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. Right? That's a great word for a church, isn't it? I'd really like to tell you this, but it's hard to speak to you because you become dull of hearing. <laughs> For though by this time, you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. But the writer of Hebrews is telling a whole group of people, you should all be teachers by now. I can't teach the word. I don't know it. Well, it's hard to tell you this when you become dull of hearing. <laughs> Some of us are like, me, 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 me. Right? We're all actually called. You now, the scripture says to be careful as a teacher because there's a stricter judgment. But it says by this point, if you've been saved very long, you should all be able to teach the word. We're all called to pray for the sick. We're all called to preach the gospel. We're all called to prophesy. We're all called to teach the word. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, don't worry, I'm not going to make you get up here and teach or preach, but I might. They all have this understanding we're supposed to do the stuff. Right? We're all called to do these things. Now, thank God that He is restoring a new wineskin. Right? 
where it's not just, you know, now, does God set people in authority in churches? Absolutely, right? And, and do we grow in the gifts that God gives us? Absolutely, right? Some, you know, that's why sometimes we do tag team preaching. Now, some of the people tag team preaching could stand up and do a whole message. And some are like, I'm just learning, right? And sometimes 15 minutes is a stretch. You have to do the work of ministry wherever we live. I mean, what would that look like? Would we have to pray for a revival? Now, should we pray for revival? Absolutely. But if we stepped into that wherever we went, we would start seeing our neighborhood transform. My neighborhood needs transformation. <laughs> it's all family. Some of them need to be transformed. I'm just saying. <laughs> our, 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 our city would start being transformed. Yeah. Our state, our nation would yeah. start being transformed if we started walking and stepping into all of this. Right? Because it's a restoration of the understanding of what the New Testament church is supposed to look like. This is who we are as a church. This is a core message of who we are as a church. You are a minister. Right? Well, maybe you're like, well, I don't want to be one. Well, no, we're all called to do the works of Jesus. We're all called to preach the gospel. We're all called to step into this, right? It will transform, first of all, it would transform the church. Right? And then it would begin to transform society. It would begin to transform our workplaces. It would begin to transform everything that we touch. Take the kingdom wherever you go this week. Right? In Walmart. Right? The pool of Bethesda. <laughs> With the blind, the lame, the leprous. <laughs> the lunatic. <laughs> the lunatics, right? Go in and stir the waters. Yes. Go in and start a wave. Yes. Right? A wave of glory, not goofiness. <laughs> Release the kingdom wherever you go. I mean, God's filling his temple with glory. Right? And really, we can have as much glory as we want wherever we go. Because as you're going into the harvest, that's your food. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. A lot of times we like to talk about, ooh, we're apostolic people. We're apostolic church. You know what that means? That doesn't mean we're the grand poobah. <laughs> Whatever that is. No, that means that you've been sent by the Father to do His work and to fill what, fulfill what still needs to be done. Right? There, there's a fulfillment of eternity that comes through the body of Christ. Right? Hallelujah. Let's stand this morning. Amen. I don't need to commission you because Scripture has already commissioned you. Jesus has already commissioned you. The Father has already commissioned you. The Holy Spirit has already commissioned you. But as a prophetic act of declaration, I'm commissioning you today as the body of Christ. So, Father, thank you for Global Harvest Church. Thank you for this local body. Lord, I thank you for all the expressions of your church in Ardmore, in Carter County, in the state of Oklahoma. And Father, we declare, Father, ascending anointing today 
that we would go into the harvest because it's our food. Father, it is where abundant life meets us. And so, Father, I pray for a commissioning today. Father, we've already been commissioned, but Lord, I commission all of us. I commission myself under your authority, Lord, to go into the harvest today, to see the kingdom of God come. Father, wherever we go this week, Lord, I pray that people would be saved. Father, I pray that people would be healed. I pray that miracles would be released. Father, I pray that demons would be cast out. Father, I pray that the broken would be met with compassion and the love of God. Father, I pray that the orphan would be cared for. Lord, I pray that darkness would be dealt with. Father, and as we go today, Father, I thank you that that kingdom life that even Dr. Matthew saw, Father, it's not just a, 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 a glory that's present, but Father, it's a glory that's going through the people of God as we get launched out. So Father, I pray that we would carry the glory of God. We would carry the kingdom of God. We would carry the conviction of God. We carry the righteousness of God wherever we go this week in the name of Jesus. So Father, we want to thank you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you that we are ministers. Father, we're all missionaries. We're all saints. And Father, we go into the harvest this week in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You've been commissioned. Amen. Well, go and do the will of Him who sent you. Go find your food this week. I'm not just on that lunch right now, right? But go and do it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen.